そして閉幕の鐘が鳴るその目覚めは誰のものか After winning the fight, I return to the now lifeless school. Almost all the people are gone. I'm the only master. I'm the last living human in this tournament. If human is the right word. Even all the NPCs that used to be here are now gone. There's no more use for them. The Holy Grail War ends here. Only the master and servant who won the Holy Grail War remain. Plus one system anomaly. In any case, the path to the Holy Grail will now open for the winner. Where could it be? While thinking about how annoying looking for it would be. Congratulations, you have crushed the dreams of all other magi. That is to say, you have won. The Holy Grail War ends here. A voice echoes through the speakers. It's a voice I've heard before. It was the voice I heard when I met my servant at the very end of the preliminaries. It's the guide created by the Holy Grail War system. It must be based on a real person, too. The path to the Holy Grail is open to you, Victor. Pass through the door to the battlefield once more. I still don't have any answers. Maybe they'll come once I get to the Holy Grail. Well, they said there's nobody else around, so. Sonata, you need to keep your eyes open. もう少しためというものを心得よあれではバカの一つ覚えではないか Why is Saber so angry? I'm doing only what comes natural, naturally to me I don't know、uh, what else she has to be mad about バカ者ホーグのことだサーバントの切り札をザコ相手に使うでないと言っている世の黄金劇場はここぞという時に開くものそういつでもどこでもホイホイ開いていてはそのうち客足も遠のくではないか Ignoring the spectator's comment, perhaps I've been a bit too free with my use for normal phantasm. But I only use it so frequently in order to see Saber in all of her sensual gl sensational glory. んそ、そうかそれは仕方がないとは思うがうーよいどしどし使うがよい。That permission came fast. Saber comes off as stoic and honorable, but she flutters under flattery. As a master, I worry that she's too easy to manipulate. Putting that concern aside, this is a good time to ask why Saber's noble phantasm takes the form it does. なぜも何も、生前世が最も重宝したものだからだ。ほ、世は剣士であり、芸術家だからな。工芸。建築、執筆、絵画、作曲、服飾とあらゆる創作に手を出したのだそこ呆れるでない下手の横好きという言葉ぐらい知っておるさすがに脚本はニーズがないと悟り自分から控えもしたのだ用途で空気ぐらい読むんだぞたまにだが。Saber retorts before I even say anything. She's as sensitive to criticism as she is to compliments. You know, I don't understand why an emperor would be so gung ho about artists and stuff. Hmm. <laughs> だが、創作は違う。言葉では傷つけるだけの関係を、稀に改善してくれたのだ。うん。今にして思えば、世にとってもの作りは、自己表現の手段だった。人々と分かり合うために、より多くの作品を残したのだろう。She speaks fondly of the past. I misunderstood her enthusiasm for art as flighty when, in fact, it was a lot more serious. She created great works in order to, for people to understand her better. Even if no one valued them, she, made, she was satisfied with just having them made. 
Because she expressed her love for her people through her works. しかし、少しだけ残念だ。黄金工房を作っておれば、そなたの身を世の手で飾れたであろうに。うん。次回の課題はそれだな。聞けば世には連鉄の英霊もいるというし、そやつに負けぬ工房を持ってみせよう。Including the chapel, I imagine. Oh, no, these two are still here. Your fight's over? I see. So it's an, uh, to be an exchange of info. Aren't you the perceptive one? Oh. Did I gain any stat? Oh, okay, I didn't even have any stat points, I guess. I'm actually surprised they're still there, but I guess that there's still a bit more left in the game. I wonder if the commissionary and stuff is still around. This office. Oh, yeah, Sakura's still here. Congratulations, Hakuno. I'm be very happy that you kept coming to see me throughout the Holy Grail War, even if I didn't have much of a presence in the game. But if that's the role the Moon Cell wished for me, I would be silly to complain. It's alright, my parting gift to you will be a lunch. Huh? Please don't make that face. I haven't put anything strange into it. Alright then, I wish you the best of luck. Sakura's supreme lunch. Special lunch. Mostly heals, totally heals servants and says thanks. Gotcha. So I guess there might be some NPCs around. More than I expected. I guess the Aozaki sisters are not NPCs, I suppose. Oh yeah, Ronnie should be still here, shouldn't she? She is, she's not there. Let's see. There's floor, commissionary. Oh, there's Kodamine. Oh, there she is. May I go with you? The fight is over, I see. Thank goodness, I lo no longer wish to part from you. Yes, the Holy Grail War is over. I don't see any more problems. Even if I'm even I'm worried about Ronnie when she's away. I don't object. stuff. No new items of any sort, so I think I'm fine on these. Formal wear, what do we got? Nothing new, actually. I'm surprised. And let's see what Kodomini has to say. Aren't you the eager student, even though you no longer have the need of a teacher? Or are you that fond of me? No, I'm not. In fact, I'm pretty done with this bitter priest. But like it or not, he's always been instrumental to my training and advancement. Even though he's nothing more than an AI, I wanted to say goodbye. Hmm, you're a good student. Very well, goodbye. Let me offer some final advice. It is not brief, but the Holy Grail won't be going anywhere. Advice? What kind of advice could the father have now that the fighting is over? This isn't to guide you through the fight, but to enlighten you about what you will receive shortly. Maybe fairly late into the game to ask this, but what do you know of the Holy Grail? I already know the basics of it. It's a supercomputer within the moon meant to observe, also known as the Moon Cell Automaton. It is an archive that has recorded the history of Earth, or rather, mankind since antiquity. And Magi fought to the death to determine the ownership of it. Hmm. That's good for starters. Still, you need to know a few more details. As the last master, you ought to know. That crystal is the Moon Cell. Only in the past, past century has it been called the Holy Grail. An all-purpose wishing machine. Who, who decided the moon cell would only observe, I wonder? Forcing other functions upon it is primarily an observation... Um, what is primarily an observation design device is generally impossible there. But the all-seeing eye is lacking the rest of its head. Though I all-seeing, all the moon cell is not a god. It obeys the laws of physics like everything else. 
Just as the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, phenomena are not observed to do not exist. By the same token, all things that are seen must be seen. Even things that are not generally considered to exist. The moon cell is a very complete database. It records many ifs as well. With such operational power, the moon cell can both elucidate the past and provide foresight. What you are heading toward is the knowledge of the future. A place where every human wish and desire exists. A place to spy upon the future on that terrible knowledge, much like the, what uh, Laplace imagined. The moon has no will of its own. Intelligence is a distortion of pure observation after all. If someone with a will could harness the moon cell, they would see all of their wishes granted. The validity of one's motives, or even the very presence of motive, is inconsequential. Inconse all that matters is the winner of the Holy Grail War is strong. Just strength. An immoral priest that like Kodomini would reduce human struggle to that. Does the moon cell Holy Grail desire strength? Or is that or is that the conclusion reached by whoever created this priest? That is all. Did it help? What all of you have been crawling over is nothing more than the moon cell surface. Go forth, reigning master. Deep in the moon. The ring of fire awaits your answer. I'll wait in front of the arena. If you find it hard to leave the moon cell, come find me. I should see after running around and doing that stuff. Anything else, Saber? Time has finally come to leave Seraph and head to the core of the moon. I shall miss this place, even in this room, but it can't be helped. Life is a series of hellos and goodbyes. I recommend you make your final goodbyes now. I mean I moved over here, right? Holy Grail War is ended, and now all that remains is to proceed to where the Holy Grail lies. Upon our arrival, something is taking place that we do not understand. There is no reason for the system NPC to know anything more, but for our preparation we should be fine. The shop and church will be, uh, be useful, usable. Go and feel, go if you feel the need. If you want more training, you can feel free to use the arena as it has been reopened. You no longer have to observe the six-day prep period. Come and go as you please. So we go to the arena? Nah, I'm... I see. If you feel ready, go forth to the Holy Grail. Well, at least see what we're up against, and then probably go into the arena. The entrance to the battlegrounds is still the same dreary elevator. The same elevator travels to the arena, but the display indicates much greater depth. Once I'm inside, the doors close heavily and a rectangular box begins to move. なかなかに描いた戦いの連続だったな。わずか<笑> よくここまで成長してくれた。世は自分のことばかりで。そなたの欲の
こうして人生を楽しんでいるそしてそしてだ今の世の楽しみはどなたの笑顔を見ることだそれくらい良い戦いだったのだ人を愛するばかりで愛されたことがない私にとって実に描かれた戦いだった人に思われるというのは良いものだなでは参ろう我が思い人よこの先に何があろうとそなたには軽やかであってほしいそのためなら私はいかなるせめくにも耐えてみせよう It's an incredibly vast room. Actually, a space so cavernous, I could hardly be, it could hardly be called a room. It's also strangely barren, save for the, the alien object that dominates the center of the space. It resembles a giant floating eye. Though it doesn't seem threatening, it's still somewhat disconcerting. The artifact of an alien civilization, the reason for its creation is beyond human comprehension. The core of the moon cell and the base of the seraph, the holy grail of the seven heavens, responsible for creating the seven seas. In the space where the Holy Grail is enshrined, I can feel a sense of discord and dissonance. In front of the Holy Grail is a jumble of skewed stone pillars, which only adds to the tumulus atmosphere. On top of that pile of stone sits a lone figure of a man. He looks to be in his late 20s at most. His expression is blank enough to be totally unmemorable, but as an NPC, he doesn't need to make it. Yeah. おめでとう。君が聖杯戦争の勝者だ。祝祭の while he seems friendly, there is something more dangerous about him than any other than any of my other opponents. It's a feeling of nothingness. There's something very strange about the man in front of me. <laughs> There's someone else here. This man has a servant with him. At the same time he mentions his servant, I feel Ronnie tends up beside me. The person before us is not an NPC. He's actually a master like you. But what would a master be doing here? Everything should have already been decided. Well, to be absolutely accurate, I could just as easily say that you're a master who shouldn't be here either, too. How can a master who is defeated still be alive and present in this place? I must look into this later. Well, that's an issue for another day. At least one rule will still be enforced. Only one master may leave. And unfortunately, you are the one who will disappear. I advise you to enjoy what little time you have left. Now, now that's settled. I'm pretty sure your question on your mind is, what are you, right? A pertinent question worthy of an answer. Of course, I am both an NPC and a master. To be more accurate, I should say, I was. To have been an NPC who is now in possession of the power of a master, that must mean that... She briefly glances my way, her eyes wide with shock. I suppose a more thorough explanation is necessary. The story's kind of long, but please bear with me. First, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Twice H. Peaceman, but please just call me Twice. Twice Peaceman, a 20th century scientist known for his advancements in neurosurgery. I thought to be... 
Thought to be the first spirit hacker, his hatred for war was such that he charged into battles to save lives. The young girl beside me mutters under her breath, as if reciting an encyclopedia entry to herself. So that's how history sees me. That I detested war. That part is definitely true. I hate war and I will not tolerate its existence in any form. Not even the hard ways are exempt from this fact. However, that truth only scratches the surface of my beliefs. Much like the moon cell, it seems that a single well-known function has been erroneously defined my true ideals. It began when I was a student and was obsessed with the history of humanity. I'll never forget many shocking revelations I can't receive during the course of my studies. The betrayals that make up history, combined with severe shell shock, gave him, gave him an abnormal hatred of war. Allow me to clarify, by him I mean twice peace man, and he was, in fact, incredibly ill. When he saw any image depicting war, he had he was overcome with uh, overwhelming panic attacks. It was, it was almost as if he would get severe heart palpitations, and his blood pressure would skyrocket. And from that day he, meaning me, was consumed with an unease that became almost painful in its intensity. Even after becoming a scientist, he still risked his life to save others because of that unbearable pain. That's the whole of it. What drove him during his time was mortal coil, what, not our sense of righteousness. What drove me was one simple question. Why was I the only one who seemed to hate war? As I stated, Twice was ill. There's no reason for him to risk his life so foolishly on the battlefield. Why did I involve myself in war? Was it hard to, uh, was it to understand it better? Especially considering the effect of war had on me. Even while struggling with those questions, my moral self still irrationally kept going into battle. And in the year 1999, a horrible neurological disease broke out in the city far lo located in the Far East. Based on the available evidence, the cause of the outbreak was a biological weapon created by terrorists. Twice was called to the city to treat the victims of the attack when he was caught in a major attack himself. According to records made available to the public, the death toll was set at 5,000 people. The moon cell put a real count at 8,200, 8, but as you can see, the government underreported the number a tad. I can see the exhaustion in his eyes. He seems to think his story is no more than an amusing antidote. Although it's hard to tell if he's amused by the government's possible cunning or total incompetence. Anyway, that's when I, no, the person I am patterned after died. Twice ended up as one of those 8,200. Something strange. I remember seeing this place where he died, as if I too was one of those many victims. I can recall the sight of buildings set aflame, but when I was twice, it was a scene when I had experienced before. It was then that I, the mortal twice, the person I was, recaptured the repressed memories of his childhood. In the 1970s, there was a clash of ethnic groups, arranged by major powers as a war by proxy. Twice was orphaned in the conflict. The place I remembered was hell. Everything around me was collapsing. Everything fell without any sense of morality and without any acknowledgement of the value of life. And there lies its brilliance. The young twice must have concluded that life itself was truly a miracle. All that remained of that epiphany I've, to I've already told you. Anyway, twice was adopted and became a doctor. And though I tried to forget the past, that one fundamental truth was burned forever into my soul. Twice despised war more and, more and it became his intent to kill war itself. I got involved in war in order to end it. However, at the core of my being was in denial of the meaning of war. It wasn't that at all. Twice had seen many battlefields, the never-ending hell, the horrific evil per perpetrated by humanity. A group of soldiers made to fight against an army many times their size. That was far more experience than supplied. Forced to flee from gorillas, a girl of five tra travels on foot through a jungle that few could hope to survive. Innocent victims of violence who rebuilt their village and their lives without help from anyone. I find that odd. Even though I hated war, I saw a great deal of strength emerge from the conflicts I witnessed. Now that I think on it, the mortal me was the same. All of Twice's great works were born of war. The many revelations, the uncounted number of rescues, none would have happened without the hell that is war. All the mortal me really did was bring back the number of things from the depths of hell. And in the end, I was a victim of a terrorist attack. But I was. But as I was dying, it all came back to me. 
I saw the burned fields of my home and recalled the tenacity that it helped me go on, even as everyone else died. Yes, three seconds before my heart stopped, I finally received an answer to my question. It was never denial. What drove twice repeatedly into hell was because I... I, who eventually fell victim to violence, could no longer consider war the ultimate folly of mankind. Nothing can be hidden from the moon cell, and it records everything it observes, including my final thoughts. As time went on, I was reborn as an NPC based on the record of my mortal life, just like any other NPC here. They may appear human, but they're nothing more than puppets playing assigned roles. I was the same, however. The empty doll gained a heart. Maybe interacting with so many masters combined with my skills as a spirit hacker pushed me into consciousness. More likely, it was just an anomaly born from a single near impossibility. How that ha how it happened, I can't say. However, once I gained true consciousness, the only thing I could do was act as twice Peace Man would. The dream I saw as I died, the ideal that existed only in my mind, I now exist only to make it a reality. And what was in that dream that uh, the twice who died saw as life slipped away from him? Endless war, of course. To see mankind engage in a grand war of mutual extinction. He says this last statement as a matter of fact tone. There's no hint of insanity vi visible in his eyes. Naturally, and with uh, obvious sincerity, he can somehow utter such a statement of absolute madness. The future has been corrupted. That is the conclusion I've come to after studying the Moon Cell's records. Anyone with a brain can see that the world is doomed. Humankind has long since passed its adolescent stage. Man is still maturing in the 1900s. A balance was struck between penury and prosperity, but it didn't last. The period of immaturity ended, and that golden age that should have followed never occurred. You realize this, right? What has happened to the planet and its people should never have come to be. The spirit of mankind is stagnated just as the world has. The future is rotting away like overripe fruit. When that fruit should be at its best, it has fallen to the ground. That's not the way history should be. That's how Reen and Leo describe the world, a place of peace, stupefying stagnation, and entropy. But is war really the answer? Because the most efficient way for mankind to progress, stability and stasis only act to preserve a species. If, that, if the objective of modern man is merely survival, then there is no reason for them to exist. In my previous life, a great many lives and resources were consumed for the sake of convenience. Why? What was the need for such prosperity? Prosperity is just an illusion that and exists only for its own sake. I expect you agree with me. Humans are capricious creatures that must, be, must feed on dreams to evolve. The preliminaries illustrate this truth. It, in an artificial piece, ignorant aggressors rev revel in idleness. Humans can only mature after breaking free from their idleness. That seems to be the case for you. And now, ideologies based on the detritus of ignoble and forgotten past, that loss cannot be overcome. I cannot allow such ideas to become the foundations of the next epic of human civilization. Don't you agree? If the future isn't worth the suffering of the past, that would make ma man mere murderers. For the humans who lived in the distant past, the future that man is now planning cannot be accepted. The future that it, that will be is a mistake. Humanity will not spend countless lives for the society that is to come. But we cannot reverse time. Since going back is impossible, there is no choice but to move forward. With that in mind, we will recreate the wars of the past and revise the history of the last hundred years. By having everyone fight in a war of survival, mankind's consciousness will be forced on the correct path. My wish is to become a firm convi conviction. As a winner of the Holy Grail War, your existence is proof of that. <coughs> this person's existence? Ronnie whips her head and stares at me as if demanding an answer. But I am just in the dark as she is. Originally, the Holy Grail War was a way for the Moon Cell to gather data. It didn't even have a name at first. The Moon Cell only wanted the best data samples. Having a war of survival was a good way to separate the chaff. However, up until the Magi who came here made excuses for their actions, but still killed them and fled. Truly an atrocity, wouldn't you say? Until I won, this world was buried under the mountain of corpses.
After all, being an NPC, I get the luxury of continuing on even if I die. I watched their fights as an NPC, and when I became conscious, I fought battles of my own, weak though I was. After several dozen fights, I finally reached this elevated seat. After that, my story becomes simpler. Manipulating the rules of this place, I created the Holy Grail War. A battle of survival from which only a single person may emerge victorious. I remade this world into a place where the limits of human potential can be pushed beyond one's imagination. And then you appeared, the weakest master in the tournament. You managed to defeat the king of the world. You were totally unsuited for this ordeal from the beginning, just as I was. As a nameless figure drawn from the masses, you become the one whose, ha whose hand rests the fate of the world. Your soul has been tempered by crisis and conflict. Your new strength is a testament to the potential of man. When mankind reaches the heights you have, they will move forward, clearing a path for those yet to come. Now, it's time for you to claim the grail for your own. You've earned the right to show the world your true path. Shout it out so that all can hear you say that war is necessary, that humanity can and must evolve quickly. Just input that one little phrase into the moon zone. Don't stop. After that, you can do whatever you wish. Whether you become king or god is up to you. You have my blessing as your choice will bring an endless war. The moon suffered by humanity after you losing countless lives live in the deep conflict run deep. And if only the reward for such suffering is stagnation, then humanity deserves to be cast into a new world void. Some sacrifices can't go unheeded. Mankind must be inflicted with wounds that won't, they will never forget. Twice's words seem to freeze me in place, unable to think or act in any meaningful fashion. His words convey self-righteousness that transcends any sort of petty bias or prejudice. However, for a reason I cannot explain, I cannot dismiss his ideology as evil or insane. It might be true that Twice himself doesn't see his idea as some kind of righteous cause. Twice Peace Man. A digital recreation of a once living being, just as I am. Putting aside the fact that this person is a cyber ghost like me, my thoughts are still in a confused jumble. How exactly should I respond to this man? Before I can speak, a question occurs to me. As a winner of the previous Holy Grail War, why is he still here? He has a wish he wants granted, so why doesn't he just claim the Grail? Why does he have to have someone else go instead? An excellent question. The answer is that I can't. If I touch the Holy Grail, my wish will be rejected. According to the Moon Cell, my existence is considered nothing more than a regular system, data stream. I can fool the low-level processes, but if I access the core, I'd be seen as an NPC and immediately deleted. My victories would mean nothing, and I need a legitimate master, someone who can make my wish a reality. Any irregular data would be deleted, that would mean... What emotion did her words express? Her mumbling sounded very much like a dejected sigh. Ronnie stares at me, her eyes wide with open with shock and horror. That's why I've stopped here. I've been waiting for years at the gate just at, to the core, awaiting the one I deem worthy. Upon reflection, I wasted a great deal of time. I was able to plant the seeds of war on Earth from here by manipulating and manufacturing information. But it was a ca case of too little too late. Also, my methods were unreliable and on too small a scale. With full access to the Moon Cell's records and my ability to, div to divide the, the future, I can bring about Armageddon. Of course, I don't intend for everyone to die. I simply wish to instigate a war that anyone can survive. You can see it through the gate. There lies the Moon Cell's core, an object made of the purest photonic crystal. The results of the sim simulations of the Earth's future run by the Moon Cell are stored as light within the core. The one who reaches the core has the right to choose the course of the future from infinite possibilities. I'm sure you understand now. Whoever claims the moon cell can manipulate reality as they see fit. This object, which envisioned an infinite number of possible futures, can reshape the fabric of reality. If what he says is true, then the Holy Grail could accurately be considered the mind and will of God. Nothing is impossible. It's truly an object of unimaginable power with infinite possibilities. Yes, you do understand. It has been uh, many other names. The Photonic Abyss, Angelica Cage. Take your pick. You have earned the right to claim it as your own. Now please proceed. 
Unleash the perfect storm upon the world. To undo the lie of stability, rewrite history as I have said. Twice looks in my direction, an expression of earnest confidence reflected on his face. Almost as if he is sure I share his belief that war is the answer. This man, while despising war and violence, could not ignore the immediate results that war brings. The supposed comrade, who gained strength through fighting much like I did, clears a path for me. However... I can't accept twice his view of the future, no matter how logical it seems on the surface. After speaking of Reen and Leo, after all the fighting, I realize that even in a stagnant world, there are still those striving for change. The world belongs to the living. Mere shades of life like me and Twice have no right in the, to the present or the future. Your conclusion is overly sentimental, don't you think? I expected that, but still, give it a bit more thought. Servant, I'd like to hear your thoughts on the matter. Do you think I'm evil and should be eradicated? <laughs> don't be ridiculous. Good and evil, right and wrong, none of these things have any meaning. Those of any substance will always move forward, even if they suffer the consequences of their mistakes. Spilling the blood of others even as they shed their own, they prove their worth through their deeds. That is the way humanity has always been and always will be. It is utter stupidity to think that beauty only comes from a delusional sense of righteousness. Zebra speaks twice in her normal, indifferent, slightly superior tone, but a slight edge starts creeping in. Good and evil are one and the same. It just depends on which side you stand. Your ideals mean nothing to me. But I do have one question I wish to ask of you. You claim to have been here for a long time. There must have been some others who have come before us. What happened to all the previous winners? Good question. Now that I think about it, there should have been some sign of those who came before me. They were incapable of seeing my point of view. Or more accurately, they didn't see any value in my dream. Joyce looks meaningfully at the pillars in the surrounding area. His answer couldn't be any clearer. The pillars gathered together are their gravestones. So I see. You reward victors not with the garland, but with poison chalice. The fact that fact alone is enough to make you an enemy of mine. Zebra so draws her sword. Like her, I can't excuse his actions, even if it means becoming another stone pillar. I don't understand. Like any other human, you are the embodiment of everything I believe in. That might seem to be the case, but even if we walk the same path, our feelings may be completely opposite. I must have died in the same incident that took twice. However, I learned different lessons of my death. Sadly, for you, you cannot escape. Only a single master may leave the moon cell once they have made it here. Once the participants have been reduced to one, the permission is granted to leave Seraph. That is the one thing I cannot change. The moon cell has made this rule a fundamental requirement for entry. In other words, there's still you and me. As long as both of us exist, neither can escape this place. So there's no path open for you, but the one that leads you to the Holy Grail. And given your capricious nature, I can't relax yet. There's still no guarantee your potential will shine through. The world has reached its limit as well. Soon it will be too late to overcome the stagnation of man. However, twice peace man is wrong. If the moon cell automatically erases regular data, I cannot go inside. Just like twice, if I pass through that gate, I will be eliminated. And if twice somehow wins, he'll gain nothing. In the end, no one will win this fight. But even knowing that, I'm not bra big on brainwashing as it can end in self-destruction, but your spirit might survive the process. It doesn't matter to me if you resist. If you want your wish to come true, you'll have to defeat me anyway. And as such is destiny. At the end of things, this is the conclusion we arrive at. Now then, it's time to bring this chapter of the Holy Grail War to, the clo to a close. To the victor go the spoils. That is the way of humanity, something that I'll never change. ボンピャクのサーバントよ。ムーンセルがその蔵書から私に与えた救いの姿を。来たれ救世の英霊。この世でただ一人。生の苦しみより下脱した回答者よ。
If it is for the purpose of creating the path mankind will follow to Dharma and thus to enlightenment, then I'll come forth to grant salvation to all things and guide them with the might of my Vajra.苦しみの分かち合う伴侶がいるのなら花となろうそなたがいる限り the words of my servants serve to encourage me. And in the end, twice was right about one thing. There are some things that conflict can help to grow. And the most important thing to me is that bond that exists between me and my servant. Regardless of the strength of the enemy or the consequences of failure will have in the future, I won't back down. I'll face this one last battle with the one that has been with me since the begin from the beginning from by my side. この戦いをもって私の聖杯戦争は完結する。そうしよう。オッケー。そなたに我が最後の術を愛すべき勇者に捧げよう。その情熱をここで断ち切る。人の業を守るのは人の業を愛した暴君よ。よい、始めよう。ミューズの過去を思考の芸術を守りたまえ。させぬ。させぬ。全力で来たまえ。I didn't expect him to just do attack and nothing else. Than the report. You could 
来たまえ受けるがよいメグナムカエロラムエトジェフナ気づかれよ我が魔天ここに思考の光を示せ<笑>その目も耳も不要だ全力で来たまえ。Shit! All right, I got a revival. Could have ended badly. I can hear the sounds of battle, and though I've been defeated many times, it's still painful all the time. But I have no regrets. Just as life is an endless cycle, war too will endure. You're proof of that. Twice, who even now still holds tightly to his beliefs, slowly begins to fade away like all the others. Re that, that was really the savior fight. I was expecting that to be way harder. But whether he's following his own rules or those of the moon cell, I cannot say for sure. Now, go and touch the Holy Grail. You'll come to understand many things once you do. Wantingly consuming lives, thriving without a purpose, our future blossoms like a flower by the roadside. Whether that turns out to be right or wrong, I would like to see for myself and judge with my own eyes. If we are both righteous or not. In, in an instant, I thought I saw something that, that was truly him, but it might have been just an, an illusion. Without any time to contemplate what was happening, Twice Beast Man passes into oblivion. 
His servant too will soon join him in the void. Without exception, all life will perish. All living things are trapped in a cycle of suffering and death. The one who sought enlightenment through the strength and perseverance still has an untainted soul. But there is more than one path. Just as good and evil have value, beauty of the world will endure. King of the blood-drenched battle. In Nirvana, let us witness the end of the world, for w there lies your salvation. With an expression much like his master's, the servant fades away like a flower, pe losing its petals. The only person to have escaped the cycle of suffering, seen by as some sort of savior, is the spirit of humanity. I see now, he did not support Twice's ideals. Instead, he was showing compassion for the soul of the human known as Twice Peace Man. <laughs> With this, it's finally over. The girl's relief is obvious in her tone of voice. However, the ending has yet to be revealed. There remains one last thing to do. The Holy Grail. The world will come to will only come to an end once the victor claims it for their own. <laughs> ah, that's right. I've forgotten all about that. The smile on Ronnie's face is proof that she has yet to realize the winner of this war and twice are the same. The moment I touch the Holy Grail, the Moon Cell, I'll be identified as irregular data and erased from memory. The thought of leaving this girl who finally learned to feel is painful, but some things cannot be changed. However, even if I am to be deleted, there should somehow be a small window of opportunity. Time enough to sneak in a modest wish. To extinguish the remaining fires of the war that Twice had set ablaze. To put an end to the senseless bloodshed of the Holy Grail War once and for all. The Moon Cell Automaton, the very mind of God, I will seal it away so that no one will be able to access it again. and also to return to her, the last true survivor, safely to our mortal existence. A number of wishes race through my mind, but I won't have time to ask for them all. I can only ask for the most important of my desires. But any wish I make will be influenced by the experiences I gained fighting in this war. I make my way to the Holy Grail, the object that is both the bane and boon to one's fortune enough to survive. As a fallen master, I cannot go with you, but I'll wait here for your return. Please come back quickly. The gentle expression on her face puts my worries at ease, as no soulless doll is capable of a smile that's so alive. Even if I don't return, she can live the rest of her life as a real person and capable of human emotions. And with that, I move toward the gate without further hesitation and without looking back. Before me stands the Holy Grail, I slowly extend my hand and place it on the core of the moon cell. The instant I make contact with it, I am drawn inside the Holy Grail. To be more accurate, I am absorbed into it like water being absorbed by a sponge. In the short time before I am erased from existence, my consciousness is immersed into the whole moon cell. I can see everything that exists within it. Every piece of information. Every observation. Every conclusion. The sheer volume of information and idea stored in the moon cell forms an intricate collage that no human could decipher. Though I sense a pattern. In fact, I can't cannot say that Twice's interpretation of human history recorded by the Moon Cell was wrong. For war has always brought change, but in this day and age, humanity has mistaken stag stagnation for peace. And throughout it all, the Moon Cell continues to silently record what it sees, without ever taking action. After endlessly analyzing the data at records, 
It files away its conclusions and resumes its role of a voyeur. It is there that on Earth that the whole of human existence is contained. Whether it triumphs and what whatever triumphs and tragedies befall mankind in the world, the moon cell continues to silently observe and record. It is that strength, that force of existence that twice failed to see and understand. And now is not the time to become emotional. I have to tell the Holy Grail that my, what my wish is. Input complete. I was able to enter my wish without a single mistake, I think. Now all there is for me to do is wait for the end of my tenuous existence to come. However, oddly, my death doesn't seem to be coming anytime soon. Being one of the moon cell, I share its unique view of time, where infinity can be contained in a single second. So even the briefest moment seems somewhat more drawn out than normal. But even with that, it... Wait a moment, this can't be right. Perhaps that man twice was mistaken. I can hear my servant mutter into my ear. They're, they aren't there in person, but as part of the Holy Grail. My guess is my servant has somehow slipped unseen to the Holy Grail at the same time I entered. <laughs> Don't act as if you just notice me. It is your duty to be aware of my presence at all times after all. However, something doesn't feel right. With war the war over, there's no reason for her to follow me here. This is your final duty as a master, correct? It's only natural that I'm present at this time. Especially since it seems that this, that if this is a time when you are in need of my strength. So that's what she's doing. With the additional presence, the time the moon cell needs to finish the elimination process is increased. As is her way, she has come to aid our worthless master one final time. However, to delay this long can't be the result of my servant's presence. Something else must be going on. Since I'm connected to the moon cell, it shouldn't be too difficult to find out what's going on. And what seems to be only a heartbeat, my whole of consciousness arrives at one long data file. This appears to be you. What does this uh, cryogenic storage mean? The info in this data file concerns a patient with fatal brain disease that affects memory re retention. And only a doctor familiar with the surgical procedure used to treat the disease died of a terrorist attack. Until another surgeon can re replicate the procedure, the patient was put into cryogenic storage. If there's a living human that shares my exact identity, then I may be more, ran more than random bits of data. That must be the reason why I'm still around. The moon cell needs more time to analyze this new information. But I'm sure that guy didn't come here as a magus. I'm just a copy of a person trapped in an endless dream. Whatever the case, my fate is almost assured. I'm sure that my time here is coming to an end. However, there remains enough time to send out one final message. I wonder what will become of Ronnie after I disappear. Will the bond we share compel her to search for me? The boy currently frozen in an endless dream has never met Ronnie, but I'm sure that will become they'll become friends. Even if it turns out she's no longer needs me, that'd be okay as well.
You know, I recognize a lot of these voices. Looking forward to doing the green route now, since I see that Kobayashi Yu is voicing Clown Girl. That's gonna be... She always has the craziest fucking voices. <laughs> Also gotta fight Ryogi, uh, either as Archer or Caster. Whichever one I feel more confident with whenever I get around to doing that. But yeah, I was actually expecting that to take a lot longer. I was expecting to go through a multi-floor dungeon before getting all the way to twice. And not to defeat him on my first try extraordinary, extremely easily. He might have been the easiest boss in the game, jeez. Either that or I just got stupidly lucky. I'm not sure I understand, but you, do you mean that you have an existence outside of this world? Then everything should work out fine. You are my master. You know what needs to be done, correct? And you do have my permission to visit me occasionally. Actually, come any time you wish. I'd be happy to see you again. Makes me happy to know our relationship won't be ending any, any soon. Yeah. Sounds like it would entail an incredible amount of effort, though. I sympathize with him having such a burden. Though it's someone else's problem, it's my responsibility. The dissolution of my current self has begun. Outside the Holy Grail, Ronnie's voice begins to fade away. As what makes me, me, is comprised into the smallest units of illicit data, I think my, uh, my slumbering self. When he wakes up, his memory will be a blank page, with no friends or family to help guide him. I wonder how that strange new world will appear to them. Nothing about that past will have any meaning. What am I saying? If that's the only thing to be lost, then it'd be okay. Although I'll miss... Uh, those who I've met along the way, the world will still be here. And as long as the path before me remains, I'll continue to walk it. There are no grades given for goals and wishes. No matter how small they may seem to others, as long as I keep moving forward, they'll eventually come to fruition. Is that desire for uh, that wish become reality and keep you going till the end? I have no worries. There will always be those who strive to change the world, those I care about. I'll be able to live with them and eventually move them, move forward into the future with them. 
I can't believe how promising and hopeful the future sounds. I can't wait for it to arrive. Alright, I guess that's it for the Saber route. Should be give me it should be giving me new game plus save stuff. Yep. You know, carry over certain items. Be careful not to accidentally overwrite this data when saving.